You know, I did some filming in Austin uh, that wrapped up a few That's days right. ago with Kino Corner. You want to check him out everywhere, especially on YouTube. Um, and I got put through a real, I got put through the crucible of, uh, of real style shooting. I don't know how else you want to describe it, but we were shooting on 16 millimeter. Uh, we had a limited amount of film. We'll call it high pressure. Yeah, it That's was what it is. It was pretty. It was really, really good because I, I just, I mainly do all improv. And the last time I did any script stuff, it was for the pilot, and it was botched. And uh, it was a very small chunk, and we blah blah blah. But this was a brand new experience, and and uh, you know, I got, I really got run through the crucible of uh, of the working actor, which I really, really needed, and I really appreciate from the whole crew that everyone was such. Such legends there. I really can't believe it. It was, oh, it was really, really crazy. Shooting, shooting like that's something I'm not used to. Charles wants me to go through it. Uh, I'm scared to, because, <laughs> not to say that I ever have to take a lot of takes, and that's not me gloating. It's just if you are, if you, if someone tells you you have to get it in one take, yeah. it's a whole different ball game. It, it does change. It changes things, it. But if, but you, with the experience you have. Um, it actually, in my in my experience, while it was earlier, there was some scenes that that were kind of raw, but they were late, and I was going for a long time, and uh, and this and that. But what, this one, what was the schedule like when you were there? Uh, well, I mean, I would. S I, I it was some days were pretty long. I don't want to. Uh, some days were long. Some days some days went deep into the into the night. Let me just let me put it that. <laughs> Look way. at the cigarette. I thought the carpet was on fire. <laughs> Yeah, I got into the habit of throwing them raw like that. But I, in my experience, at least the next day, w when we were running out of film and everything, and uh, this was the last shoot, you can't shoot for another day, that's the way things are scheduled. Um, it, that, the exact situation that we came to is that we were kind of running out of film and we needed to get things in one take. And it, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the pressure cooker like, uh, like you would assume. It was, uh, it, was, it was like good and fun. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm sure it is fun, yeah. especially when it's done. Yeah. You can look back fondly. Yeah, it's definitely a lot better like that yep. in retrospect. Yeah, no, I, I, do, I do not know that pressure. And I mean, you think like now you're, <laughs> you, well, you're educated that way, but I'm just saying like going through the experience, you can pull a lot from that. Yo, yes. It's really, it, it's all, I guess it's all about managing your energy levels. Cause if you're going for 12 hours or a plus or whatever, and if you, if you need have lines memorized, uh, even beforehand, even if you didn't have enough time to get through some things, you got to drill with yourself and with the, uh, with the scene partner or partners, uh, right before the, sh before the, the, when they're setting up their lights and the camera and everything. And it really, it really gives a new meaning to that sort of pressure. And then you realize how little you do, uh, when you On don't side have that, that. wet. It's yeah. really, it's incredible. And managing, it, it taught me, it reminded me, and it taught me a lot about ma managing my energy levels. And you kind of have to treat your life and every day like you're on a film set to get the best out of you. Otherwise, you just coast by into nowhere. Mm. There is a sketch in World Peace 2 that, I, it's, it's, I'm not comparing it to that, but it's just the idea that I normally don't have to adhere to a script ever. Yep. And... That's obviously, I mean, the lines are so wavy, it doesn't matter, right? Yep. Um, so that's what I'm used to, and I can hang. But that the one, what I can't remember the name of what they'd call the sketch. I hope they got it. The never again? No, no, this is going back to World Peace 2. Oh, the, oh. Uh, the one where I was dressed up half looking like a clown in like... Like the news report. The news reporter thing. So I had to finally read verbatim um, and what I was reading was uh, really hard because they're not real words and it's all candy talk and... You had to uh, learn a new language. Essentially. And, uh, you know, reading through as a news reporter, trying to play the character of a news reporter with what I was reading, um, I, I really couldn't hang. I screwed that up now. If, if that was the same situation Charles was going through, uh, they would have burnt through about 12 reels of <sighs> film. And it's not, you can't do that. It would have been terrible. Oh my God. So. I, I side with you with saying that it's probably an experience, yeah, but it, it was really the, the best, the absolute best experience. Yeah, sounds good. Because um, when you're shooting digital you, and, and you're getting coverage, it really, it turns into a different, a different rhythm there. It's, it's completely different. But if you have the film and you have a finite medium for storage, you really need to block, you need to, you need to block, block, rehearse, rehearse, drill, drill, and then go for takes. And it's really, it's a, sp it's a special practice. It was really fantastic. I think I think everybody could uh, understand when you're saying, maybe it's like a speech for school or who knows what, but if you got down one paragraph perfectly, 
and then you say, I can move on from that. And then you went to a different paragraph and you started doing that one. You realize how much you lose of the next one. Yep. Or you got everything down four hours before your speech. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get there, everything gets blurry. Yes. So when schedules go so long on film sets, you lose what you had prepped. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I've, I've been through it. And everybody could understand that. It's just the yeah. way things roll. And there's some things, if, if you're going past a certain hour, there's some things you kind of can't recover from. I mean, they you can salvage things, but there, sometimes you can't recover, and it's really it's re pretty horrifying um, to to not be able to. Like you can drill, you get the lines completely down, drill, everything goes fine, and then it's like, to like, a lot of time later after the setup and after everything, and you're you're roasted, and uh, you, you can't just quit. You know, yeah. you have to keep roasting yourself and get through it, and it's it's really. It was really, really something. So yeah, so so nothing against uh, the guy that you just worked for, Kino Corner and everything yeah. like that, but was there any leniency to changing a line or was it right to the... Oh, um, yeah, there was there was definitely some flexibility, but I did my best to, to, to do it raw. Like I, I wasn't I wasn't inclined to, to improvise anything unless I was asked to directly. Okay. Yeah. So, I, you, so you, you followed. You, Right yeah. to do it. Yep, I did my best, and and it's like when you're when you're getting scenes in your head, you know, you learn you learn to get things in manage, manageable chunks, so you you compartmentalize things in your head as scenes. So it's mm -hmm. not like learning the whole script verbatim. You get your scenes and your sort of cues down. Whether you want to you know mark some cues in the script or have circle a, a you know a word or something that's going to bring you into your response to it, depending on how the script is. Yeah. Um, but then you know you also have to take into account that you know. Uh, they're gonna, not going to use the exact same words, so you're just going to have to let it ride. It's kind of funny. The uh, sorry if I'm keep referencing World Peace too, but I'm sure a lot of people love hearing about oh, that yeah. stuff. And uh, there's certain things that, just for me, I'm only speaking for myself. There's certain things that I cannot cross the line on when it comes to. Well, that's probably the wrong way of saying it. But basically, there are things that we improv a lot of things. So we're, we're standing there, we're doing our parts, and then there's always, you know, like Roachford or Sam, they have great ideas. They say, well, do this. And I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's hard. There's a, there's a thing called uh, HVAC opioids that'll come out, and I just saw some rough uh, cut footage of that, which I think is coming out fantastic. That's mindless. Follow that, man. Oh my God, he's it's a the legend. best. Um, and, uh, there was, there was parts of that HVAC opioids that I could not cross the line in my head of pulling off certain things. And it was, I'll, I'll say what it was, we were trying to reference a brewery that was next to this place that this construction project that was going on that I was dealing with. And I just had to start rattling off different funny sounding brewery names. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Like they were saying, well, just do this. You and can then do spent. that and do this. Yeah. My head was like, a freaking steel trap. I couldn't. I could yeah. not accept the information and get it out with with the prior lines. You know, you say your prior lines, you get through those, and then you have to deliver. And I, I couldn't. I could not yeah. do it. Which is it's crazy when you hit a wall. When you hit a wall like that, you are so and mad. You're at on yourself. set with the full crew. It's not like you're just alone. It's, it's really an experience. It's it's like uh, I surprise myself sometimes how stupid I can be. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, how the hell can I not do it? But I just couldn't. 